Yes, hi. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Castle Malloy. I'm Kyler Mallory's maid of honor. Yes, I remember that name. Has Matthew finally put an end to that ridiculous prank of his? No, I'm afraid he's still at it. But if you have a second, could I ask you some questions? It should be a minute or two before my ride gets here. What's on your mind? Do you have any idea where Matt may be hiding? None. And if what you're really asking is, am I in on his little joke? The answer to that is, absolutely, unequivocally, no. I detest practical jokes. Do you remember Matt saying anything odd? Anything that in hindsight might suggest where he went? Nothing that I recall. Although he did say a lot of things. Not to me, but to Kyla and that other chap, Kit. And he said them quite loudly, I might add. What do you mean? The evening before Matt disappeared, he and Kit had a terrible row. I couldn't make out exactly what was being said, but they both sounded very angry. Furious, I dare say. In fact, the next time I saw Kit, he was sporting a black eye. And the next morning, Matt and Kyla had a go at each other. Nothing physical, mind you, and once again, I couldn't make out what was said, but I promise you, they were quite put out with each other. I was more than happy to bid the lot of them farewell, though I imagine I'll be returning to the castle before too long. Matt is bound to find his prank as tedious as everyone else does eventually. I must be off. Nancy, it was a pleasure venting to you. Hopefully before too long we shall meet in person. Cheers. So, you're not so keen on staying at the castle after all, then? I'm staying there. I just wanted to talk to you. Come to me for a bit of aid and advice, did you? Well, I've got none to give. Not till I got the day's troubles behind me and a crow's nest in front of me. Huh? The mix maid suddenly took ill, leaving poor Seamus on his own, running back and forth trying to mix and serve at the same time. I ordered soon as I walked in, yet here I sit, dying of thirst. I'll do no talking till I get me crow's nest, and there's the sorry truth of the matter. But now, were some spry and spunky lass to lend poor Seamus a hand by taking over the mixin' for a while, that would surely speed the plow. Sounds good to me. I'll see to it you get your crow's whatever, ASAP. Gonna play mix maid for a while, are ya? Well, here's what you're to do. I'll take the orders and put the tickets up here. Each ticket will have no more than two drinks on it. And to save time, I draw little pictures instead of writing out their names. The mixin' book will tell you which little picture stands for what drink. It'll also tell you what's in each drink and how to make each drink. Now, lass, you must do the mixin' fast and proper. The quicker you mix, the more tips you'll be keeping. To work with, you know. Ah, not a moment too soon. Ah, not a moment too soon.
All done and dusted, are ya? Thank you, miss. Take what's in the tip jar. And the next time you help out, you can keep the tips then as well. You make a mean crow's nest, girl. Well done. Now, I'm to tell you what happened to the Sassenach, am I? I'm sorry, happened to the what? The Sassenach. The Englishman. The one Kyler was supposed to be marrying. Well, what happened to him is this. The she took him. The good people whisked him straight off to their world, they did. By the good people, you mean fairies? You'll not be hearing me call him that. All of us have a name we prefer, and with them, the good people it is. So that's what I call them, and you'd be wise to do the same. Can you prove that's what happened to him? Can I prove it? Did you see him up there, lass? Does anyone see him now? Gone he is, vanished from the earth. The knot you see instead of him. There's your proof, girl. Tis not the first time the good people have seen fit to meddle in the affairs of Castle Malloy. Cause the explosion they did. The one that destroyed half the castle? Brendan, his wife, Caitlin, used to own this place, she did. Aye, and their little girl, Fiona. All three were lost to the world forever when the place blew. But the blame lay not with Malloy. It was the good people. They'd taken a shine to Fiona, is why. And they knew that little girls, no matter how much they're adored by we folk or mortals, sooner or later, all little girls grow up and grow old. The good people couldn't bear to see this happen to their beloved Fiona, so they made full sure it never did. Sounds to me like the good people are actually just the opposite. They have their ways and we have ours, is all. That's just the way of things. Got plans for you, they do. The fairies? Uh, the good people? What makes you say that? I meant to pocket your car keys for safe keeping on my way over here. But I couldn't find them. You mean my keys weren't in the car? Aye, that's exactly my meaning. Taken they were. The good people want you to be staying. The name of this place, just what exactly is a banshee? A woman, one of the good people, as alive as you and me, with wild hair almost as long as the tattered grey robe billowing up around her whenever she appears. Sometimes she takes on the form of a hooded crow, but it's the sound she makes, her terrible wailing, that strikes fear in the human heart. Because when a mortal hears the wail of a banshee, it means someone is about to die. I saw someone with long hair and a grey robe outside the castle tonight. Did you know? She... it ran across the road in front of me. That's why my car's in the ditch. Not till I was fifty and four did I see a banshee. To see one at your age, on your very first night in Ireland. A special lass you are indeed. Do banshees ever leave things behind, like, say, little dolls? Do not be mistaken banshees for Santa Claus now. A warning is all they leave behind about something that's coming and can't be stopped. Do you dislike all Englishmen as much as you dislike Matt Simmons? Or is he special somehow? I've little use for any Sassnach. But I took a dislike into this one soon as I laid eyes on him. Arrogant he was. Cocky. Disrespectful. Foolish. Always touching things he shouldn't. Go in places he didn't belong. Worse than a stray dog, that one was. What about his friend Kit? Aye. He may talk like a Yank and live like a Brit, but there's Irish in the lad. I saw it right off. Little wonder he's in love with the girl. They'll make a fine pair. Whoa, wait a minute. Kit's not in love with Kyler. Blind, are you now? Loves her he does indeed. He's all but wearing a sign saying so. He came to the wedding early to make sure there'd never be a wedding. Only the good people saw to that for him. Ah, the luck of the Irish. I'd better get going. Fine with me. 